How did you become so good at playing video games? Um, aiming is an important part of every first person shooter game. Thousands strive to have the best aim they can't, me included. Those with near perfect aim are praised for their insane flicks and shots that seem impossible to hit to most. And about a week ago, I asked myself, could I reach that level? I mean, I think I have good aim already, but I want to see how far I can push myself with one month of training in Kovacs. So how exactly do I plan on doing that? First, I'll start off the day doing some carpal tunnel exercises because I care about my wrists, followed by following my aim training schedule, which should be on the screen here. These Kovax maps were picked with the intent of proving my tracking and flick aim over the next 30 days. Obviously, there are more to games than just aim, but I want to see how much I can truly improve my tracking and flick shots. The way I will be tracking my progress is trying to see what my max score is for each map on day 1 and on day 30 and comparing them side by side. The first map is 1 wall 5 targets Pasu in which there are 5 small spheres that are one shot but moving at a rapid pace and your goal is to shoot as many of them as you can in 30 seconds. The next map is 1 wall 6 targets TE which is very similar to the previous map but here there are 6 targets that are still making this map focus more on flick aiming. The map right after is Close Long Strafe's 30 seconds, where you face an invincible hitbox and your goal is to track your crosshair on him for as long as possible, obviously training your tracking aim. This map is perfect for games like Fortnite if you want to practice your close range tracking aim. The next map is Fugla Long Strafe's, which also aims to improve your tracking, but this time the hitbox is moving on both the Y and X axis, whereas the previous map was just moving on the X axis. After that is Tile Frenzy Strafing a spin-off of Jumbo Tile Frenzy where the hitbox are stagnant, whereas here the tiles are moving. This map is similar to 1 wall 5 targets Pasu, only this map trains more of your close range flick shots. The final map is Vertical Long Strafes, where you track an invincible sphere for as long as possible. The sphere only moves vertically, hence the name, which makes it focus on your vertical tracking aim. The 30 days start now. Alright. So I've completed the 30 days of aim training and I gotta admit it was a fair amount of work. A couple days in I started hating some of the maps but regardless I stuck with all of them for the full 30 days and with some of the maps I even went over the amount of time that I assigned to myself. Also I ended up changing my method of recording my improvement so the data would more accurately represent how I was actually improving. What I would do is I would take my highest score for that day and record it down in a data sheet for each and every map and at the end of the 30 days I made 6 total graphs with all the data points, um, one for each map. All of the graphs are on the screen now and most of the data turned out exactly as one would expect. The graphs typically increase over time and a lot of the progression falls around the first week of aim training, which is what I expected, but things get more interesting when you look at Tile Frenzy Strafing 01. For the first 20 days or so, the scores remained about the same, but on the 23rd day, the scores became very erratic and I still have no idea why this might be. With this map, it felt like progression one day would be impossible, and towards the end I would be surprised that I didn't reach the score earlier. Maybe I reached some sort of flow state while playing on these exceptionally high scoring days, but I guess we'll never know. Another notable map to look at is Close Long Strafe's 30 seconds. Here my scores improved really quickly in the first week, and then right after, the scores remained very consistently the same. At first, I was thinking that maybe this has something to do with the fact that the map is a tracking map, but when looking at data from the other tracking maps I played, this theory didn't hold up. Every other map turned out just about as expected, but did this actually help my in-game aim? Well, first it's important to understand that this is slightly less quantifiable, as I just don't have the time to record down every data point in every game I play but you're just gonna have to trust me moving forward. After 30 days, I felt incredibly confident in my aim and overall, I definitely noticed that my aim improved as expected and even though currently I'm far beyond the 30 days, I still Kovax daily and I noticed that when I don't Kovax before playing, there's a huge dip in my mechanical performance. 
This is likely because not only does aim training lead to you having better aim, but it also warms you up before playing. If you are interested in doing this for yourself, I highly recommend that you give it a go, and I think you'd be surprised with the results even in such a short amount of time. After the 30 days were done, there were definitely some maps I kicked out of my routine, and I have since replaced with maps I felt would benefit me the most. I'll have my current aim training schedule in each map posted in the description, and if you're familiar with some of the maps, you'll recognize that my new routine has a more heavy focus on small adjustments um, since I switched from Fortnite to Valorant. Hey guys, really quickly before the video ended, I just wanted to say thank you for sticking around uh, to the end of it, because this video took a lot of time to make, and I was, uh, <laughs> I decided to procrastinate editing this video for a long ass time so i'm really happy that it's finished now um i hope you guys enjoy it and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the future make sure to subscribe if you like content like this and want to see more of it going forward and if you have any ideas just leave them down in the comments down below all right thanks so much guys see you later